At Cedarship, we've been spending our quarantine time seeking out good to share. And thanks to small local businesses across the country, stepping up to give back to their communities, it hasn't been hard to find. There's no shortage of stories, that's for sure. Today, we're with one of those business owners, Bill, a franchise owner of Fish Window Cleaning in Springdale, Arkansas. Bill, welcome. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. So before we jump in, tell us a little bit about your business and also your journey as a local business owner. Oh, yeah, great. Uh, I own a, a franchise called Fish Window Cleaning, and, and I got into the business not out of the love of window cleaning, uh, but from in my career, I've always loved building businesses and building teams. And after about a 25 year uh, career in the in a food business uh, was caught in the corporate layoff and had to figure out what was next for me and my family. We got into this business from the standpoint of it allowed us to stay in our in our community, uh, which we love dearly, and find a way to uh, provide for our family. So tell me a little bit about how have the business closures and the stay at home mandates affected your business? Yeah, man. At first, it was, uh, and Arkansas has has been very blessed in terms of not the level of of, of uh, interruption and, and devastation other areas of the country have had. Uh, but it, as it as it unfolded, the closures started coming quickly and more quickly, and we went from just a few cancellations on our regular service to about eighty percent of our customers calling and saying, "Hey, I'm shutting down. I don't need you to come clean my windows, and I, I certainly can't afford it." Uh, so stop. And we woke up really two weeks into the crisis with almost 80% of our business having canceled. And, and it was really hard from the standpoint of having those conversations with the business owners who were calling and you could hear it in their voice, yeah. uh, the, the heartbreak and, and they're laying off the, the people that they care about and they're trying to figure out how they're going to keep their head above water. And it's like, you know, window cleaning is, is the least of your problems and we'll, we'll be here when you get ready and that was our commitment to them is when, when they're when they're ready, give us a call and we'll pick back up. I can now. So with all that uncertainty, so much out of control, right? Not even knowing the timeline. What were your priorities as you were facing this? Well, it, it was particularly frustrating because leading up to this, we were having record growth, continued expansion. We had added on a two or three new new uh, technicians to clean, had the training complete, and we were ready for a really busy season. So it was heartbreaking from us of, hey, we're right, we show up to the dance and we're all, all dressed and ready to go, and then they canceled it. So uh, talking to my wife and, and, and family and, and praying a little bit about it just said, hey, I, I, I'm not going to just let my people go. And uh, along the way in my business career, had some lessons of, hey, in times of crisis, take care of your people first. And so I had the idea of, hey, I'll pay them out of my pocket and keep them around and we'll clean anything that, that's of, of value to the community. So we started doing nursing homes for free and we started cleaning nurses' homes for free. We went to the restaurants who were still open who are feeding kids and, and taking care of pe feeding kids for free and doing things and we're cleaning that cleaning their windows so we just kept looking for places where we could provide some good or some value to the community and i could keep my guys skills sharp keep them from uh going on unemployment and they wanted to work so they got to do work that they felt good about giving back to the community uh i was able to cover their payroll out of, out of, out of my savings and keep them around so and, and they still had their challenges of hey their wife lost their job or they had child care issues so we were flexible on the scheduling and all that but they were able to have a place to come to every day and and feel like someone cared about them i imagine i mean that probably gave them a sense of purpose right during this time when everything is halted they still have kind of meaning and and a boss that's there standing up for them yeah and, and we we called nonprofits and restaurants and they would show up and clean them and, and they got the praise and they got some, some cases, some tip money or some free meals or other things that people gave to them along the way. So it was, it was great to see them come back excited about the work that they had done or the reaction that they had gotten from some, some people who, who didn't understand what they were doing. And then once they, they understood, they were just, they were very well respected. So tell me a little bit about how has this experience changed 
your perception of community, of your community, or maybe your role as a business leader in the community? Well, I mean, along the way, what we did was not a lot very different from other, other people in the, in the area. So this business community is one of resilience and scrappy and resourcefulness. And so th there were other people doing far more beautiful things than we were doing. Uh, but to be alongside of those other business leaders and build those connections and relationships uh, a little deeper was what was exciting for me. Uh, knowing that we can do good in our community and, and uh, give back to the people who, who are taking care of us uh, felt absolutely terrific. Uh, but honestly, about halfway through it, I was swallowing hard with my wife and just saying, man, I, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing because this is, this is really expensive um, to do a lot of work and not get paid for it. And then, you know, just having faith that it'll all, it'll all, it'll all come out and, you know, kind of go back to some of the lessons business leaders ahead of me have, have taught me is, Hey, take care of your people. And when bad things happen, what matters most is how you respond to it. So we had a lot of confidence that how we're responding to this crisis is the right thing to do. So have faith and stay the course. And as it's turned out, all my people were able to stay on board and, and stay employed. Uh, but as we're getting ready to reopen, the phone doesn't stop ringing. And now I've got a good team of people around me that we can respond to all, all this demand. Yeah, I was going to say, it seems uh, there's that saying, right? When um, what goes around comes around. So if you put out kindness, it will kind of return back to you. Maybe since you put those pr priorities of your people and your community, now as you're reopening again, do you feel like some of that kindness has kind of made its way back to you? Yeah, I, I mean, the, the, we cleaned a lot of places that we're not going to get business from, that um, they don't have the money in their nonprofits to, to, to afford professional window cleaning. So we were the first time that they have cleaned these facilities in 10 years. Um, but we kept our people in, in a good position. And as customers are calling us saying, hey, we need you back. We're going to open, reopen in two weeks. We're going to reopen tomorrow. Can you be here? I can tell them, yes, we've got a team of people that we've kept on board and we're ready to go. So right. uh, yeah, it, it, it's the right thing to do for your people. It's the right thing to do for the community. Um, and I'm hoping that it'll keep us in a better position as we, as we get to reopen. Wonderful. Well, Bill, thank you so much for taking the time to share with us your story. And it's great to hear how uh, with spring has come the rebound of uh, your community and business as usual or a new norm, right? <laughs> exactly. Well, take care, stay healthy, and um, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.